All right, this is the 7.4 lesson for my grade 11 applied students. And here we go. All right, quick background. We had this conversation yesterday. People, if you remember, oh, here's what the blank page can be for. In MEAP, you learned that straight lines, AKA linear equations, have three forms. It's like Pokemon, they keep evolving. The simplest form is what we call y equals mx plus b, and it's also probably the most useful if you gotta make a graph, because it's the form where you have a slope and a y-intercept. But the more formal form, formal form, yeah, sure, is when you have standard form, remember that? And a lot of the algebra you did last year was switching back and forth in these two forms. But if you're really good at remembering grade 10, there was a third form that you don't use often, but it could be really useful. If you knew two points, like say you knew the point two, three, and, and negative one, four, say you knew those two points were on a line. What's the equation of the line? Well, you can find the slope of those two things. If you remember slope, you just take the two y's and subtract them, and you take the two x's and subtract them. So there you go, the slope is one over negative three. So now I know the slope and I know two points. Actually, if I know the slope and one point, I can make the equation. Do you remember what the form is? That's the one. So you would take, if you were gonna use this, you'd go y minus my three equals my slope m and x minus two. And there you go. Now that doesn't look like either of these two forms, but no big deal. Use your algebra skills and you could turn it into whatever form you wanted. That was what you did in MEAP. There was this third form that you don't use much, but once in a while it's super useful. Quadratics is the same way. We've covered the two forms that we use the most. The one we started with was standard form, which tends to be the form we use the most when we want to use it like it's a formula where we plug in X numbers. We'll see more of that as we get into the problem solving. The only thing this tells me other than, hey, there's my quadratic equation, is that this C number happens to be the y-intercept. It also tells me that the A number tells me whether it's a, a regular parabola, or if A is a bigger number than one, it's a skinny parabola. Oh, if A is negative, it's an upside down parabola. So it does tell me a couple things. But by far, the more useful form is this one. It still has that A number that tells me if I'm skinny or wide or right side up or upside down. But now, what does this one tell me? It tells me that the vertex, which is the place where it turns around, that important point, is H comma K. You're probably saying to yourself, well, that must be it. I, I, I've got everything I need to know about quadratics. No, there's a third version, and here it comes. The third version is called the factored form, and it looks like this. Hey, this part's familiar. It's still got an A on it. You could always watch it again. So y is equal to that is the factored form where, I'll slow down a bit so you can get this part down, where x1 and x2 are the x intercepts. So that's what makes this form special. This form tells you something the other two don't. You can just look at it and know where the parabola hits the x-axis. Okay, so now, question. Bed mass? No, what are you asking me? I'm not sure. Ask me out again later. I want to we'll get the, I'm down to 17 minutes. We got to finish this. Okay. Anyway, here we go. Um, recall. Recall. Okay. Ask me later. Recall that the vertex of a parabola is what we call the points H and K. 
If I knew the x-intercepts, could I find h or k? Well, the answer is I can find h really easily. Let's go back to the one we just did as our little practice quiz. Guys who are watching this lesson online, we did a practice quiz on the previous section before this. And we came up with this lovely graph here. Well, actually, we didn't come up. They gave us this graph. This has x-intercepts at negative 3 and 7. If I knew that I had x-intercepts at negative 3 and 7, I know that the vertex is right in the middle of those, because all parabolas are symmetrical, right? So how do you find the middle between the numbers 3 and 7? How do you find the middle between two numbers? You add them up and divide by 2. Perfect. So that's going to be our trick for this. If you know the vertex, or if you know the x-intercepts, the h value would be add the two x-intercepts up and divide by 2. Another way you could say this is it's the average of the x-intercepts. So let's try playing with this graphically. If we have a x-intercept or intercept form of the equation. Now, you look at that and go, well, that doesn't even look quadratic. Well, it is, because you know that when you multiply those brackets together, you're going to get an x squared, right? And that's what makes a parabola a parabola or a, a quadratic a quadratic, is that you have an x squared. So the vertex here, the vertex would be, let's see, hmm, the vertex would be negative 3 plus 5, or sorry, plus negative 5. Let me just goof that up. Let me fix that. Divided by 2, which is negative 8 divided by 2. Aha! The x-coordinate of the vertex is halfway between those two things. Oh, wait a sec. Hold on. Ma mistake, mistake, mistake. Let me start again. Sorry. The x-intercepts here, hold on. The x-intercepts are not negative 3 and negative 5. The x-intercepts happen, I forgot to do this part, when y is 0. My bad. There we go. We've seen this before. X-intercepts happen when y is 0. I have a number times a number makes 0. In math, how do you make 0 when you multiply? Well, one of your factors has to be a 0. But they could both be 0. What would make this factor a 0 if x was 3? What would make this factor a 0 if x was 5? So that's my x-intercepts, 3 and 5. Notice that the x-intercepts are always the opposite of the numbers and the factors. That's always going to be true. Okay, next. Oops, my 5 went away. 5. Next, let's find the vertex's x-coordinate. Add up the x-intercepts and divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, how, oh, and you know what that tells me? That tells me that the axis of symmetry is 4. But I don't know the y-coordinate of the vertex. How am I going to find it? Well, I know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 4. So the y-coordinate will happen when this x is 4. So this factor is 4 minus 3. This factor is 4 minus 5. What's 1 times negative 1? I'm trying to find y by knowing what the x is. Right? Okay. So now from here, hey, the x-intercept happens when y is 0. When does the y-intercept happen? When x is 0. Let's find that with our new equation. And what's negative 3 times negative 5? Positive 15. This one's not even going to fit on my grid, but oh well. This part's no different than the last time we did it. Easiest half mark in the whole course. But what about the range? Oh yeah, it's a good thing I found this number, because the range is always dependent on that number. This is a 
parabola where the a number is a one, right? There's a one in front of that bracket. So that means that's a positive. I know this parabola goes up. And if the parabola goes up, that negative number is the smallest y value I can ever have. So y is greater than or equal to negative one. If, if, this, if this is the vertex value, and I know the parabola is going upwards, then the y values can't ever go lower than that. So that has to be the range number. How and why did you get to the y is equal to minus 3 and just multiplied by 0 being the minus 5? Because I was trying to find, okay, up here, up here I was trying to find my x-intercepts. Yeah. Oops, too far. Up here I'm trying to find my x-intercepts. Here I'm trying to find the y-coordinate, so here this, this is here. This is so I could find this 4 number here. This was so that I could find that number. And this finally is how I found that number. Okay, now I'm ready to draw it. 4 over and 1 down is the vertex. I have x-intercepts at 3 and 5. And I have a y-intercept at 15, which is way too big. So if I wanted more points, again, I think I'd go back to counting. 1 over, 1 up, 2 over, 4 up, which means I'd go 4 up on that side. And that's good enough. That's enough points. I know which way this is going. It's doing this. OK. Let's do one more. OK, I'll give you a sec. I'll give you a sec. So again, all, all of these calculations were to figure out different things. And they're all based on my understanding of how these things behave. So that's sure, by the way, that uh, Chagos uh, talking about with uh, the quadratic equation. Ah, yes, that's actually coming. Flip a couple pages and you'll see it says quadratic formula. Yeah. Quadratic formula. Yeah. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, quadratic formula 7.5. We're doing that next. Oh, yay. Okay, so now, don't worry, we'll spend a couple days on 7.4. Okay, so anyway, um, let's try the same thing for B. B is a little more complicated. What makes B more complicated than A? Can you see it right away? Yes. It's there's a number in front of the brackets that isn't a 1. So we're going to have to deal with that. All right, let's do the same tricks that we did on the first one. Trick number one, if I know this is the factored form, my x-intercepts are 6 and negative 2, right? Again, how would this factor become a 0? Because x would be 6. How would this factor become a 0 if x was negative 2? So there's my x-intercepts. How could I find the vertex? Say that again. You know that the x-intercepts happen when y is 0. I wasn't bothering to write this down, but here, I'll write it down. What would make this a 0? Well, this is a quarter. There's nothing. This has no effect. One of these two numbers in these brackets has to be a 0, or perhaps both. So we explore the possibility of both. What would make this number here a 0? 6. What would make this number a 0? Negative 2. There is my x-intercepts. What about my vertex? The x-coordinate of my vertex is halfway between negative 6 and 2. Sorry, I got that backwards. 6 and negative 2. 6 and negative 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. There, I know that. OK, what else does that tell me? The axis of symmetry has to be x equals 2. Why don't we start plotting these instead of waiting till the end? The axis of symmetry happens at x equals 2. There it is, axis of symmetry. I have an x-intercept of 6 and an x-intercept of negative 2. Somewhere along this line is the vertex. How do I find that? Well, I know that the x number is 2, so I go back to this formula and I don't have a whole lot of room here, so I'll work underneath. What is this y number when this x number is 2? 
And again, some of you might say this is algebra. I don't know. I don't think of this as algebra. I just plugged in numbers. It's arithmetic to me. What's 2 minus 6? So I have negative a quarter times negative 4 times 4. What's that answer going to be? What's a quarter of 4? 1. What's 1 times 4? There it is. You can use your calculator to help you if you want. So there it is. The vertex happens at 2 over and 4 up. There it is. Y-intercept. When does the y-intercept happen again? The y-intercept happens when x is 0. So you get a 0, and you get a 0. Okay, a little bit of rhythm. Again, you can use your calculator to help you if you want. What's 0 minus 6? Negative 6. What's 0 plus 2? 2. Okay, here's how I wouldn't touch a calculator to do that. Isn't 4 just 2 times 2? So 2 cancels one of those 2s. And 6 cancels the other one, but it leaves behind a 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. You want to use a calculator? You can use a calculator. That's fine. And there you have it. I think I'm ready to draw this thing now, right? I got enough points. To be honest, you really only need three points to perfectly define a parabola. But it's hard when you're looking at a grid to know exactly which way it's going just from three points. So it's kind of nice to have, I have five right now, or yeah, no, I have four right now. A fifth one is easy, though. This is the axis of symmetry, right? So if there's a dot there, there has to be a dot here. Now I think I'm pretty comfortable drawing my parabola. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. So I plugged in a 0 for x, and I figured out that y is 3. I have one question. What is the deductive reasoning in how you found the, how you found the, or why you did the equation to the lower left? The y this guy? Yes. This is the equation I was using to find this number. Because I knew the x number was halfway between the x-intercepts. Got it. But then once I know that number, I plugged it in here to find this y number. Because that's how equations work, right? What is an equation? It's a list of all the possible x, y numbers that could be on the graph. And there's infinity of them. But I know that the one I'm looking for has an x of 2. And I needed to know the y number. OK, and then finally, well, let's finish this one off. Practically a bonus half mark. And then what's the range again? What number tells me the range? Right. It's the vertex number, but this time, look, it's going down. So y is less than or equal to 4. OK, somebody wants to see the interval notation. Here's the interval notation. This one, I start at 4. Or sorry, let me say that again. I start at negative infinity, and I go up to 4, and then put a cap on it like that. It's like you put a little cap on it. OK, your homework. And when I say homework, I really want you to make sure you try this, guys. Your homework is to do the, oh, hang on a sec. OK, we've already done this. We don't have to do this. We'll do this as an example together tomorrow. Your homework is to try some of the questions from, let me go to the, let me go to the, the blog here where I have the, the homework written down. There we go. Your homework is page 391, 1 to 5, 8, 9, 11, 13. Now, I'm going to give you work time tomorrow after I do, like, one more example. But, and then it'll, so you'll be mostly a work period tomorrow. But go home and try the first couple, for sure. Show up already knowing what you want to ask me tomorrow. You know what I mean? All right, so I'm going to stop the video there, and that's the lesson for 7.4.